Hello, people and bots. Grandpa Canuck here, and we are in Spationaires with a tutorial today. Our tutorial is Filtration Atmospherics. Uh, this will cover the basics that you need to know. Uh, filtration is, I think, a big part of the game, and understanding what you can do and how you can do it is very important. Now, one of the things you most likely want to do is we either want to gather uh, gases from the atmosphere or save them from your furnace. Okay? Some of the tools you're going to use, of course, is your uh, handheld tablet with the atmospheric analyzer that is in it. Okay? So, as you can see, we could get nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, or pollutants from the atmosphere and just draw it out. Most furnaces produce a lot of pollutants and, uh, and CO2. You will get other gases in there depending on what metals you use. So, let's have a look at the basics. The first basic you need to master is color coding so you don't get yourself confused. Everybody is going to come up with their own individual color coding. There is a couple of major agreements uh, on most of the stationers community. It is split on the coloration. I'm using my own coloration system which is similar to the mainstay uh, stationaires but not necessarily the same so for the purposes of this video in this tutorial anything brown is either a mixed or unknown gas okay anything yellow is carbon dioxide anything white is oxygen anything black is pollutants anything red is volatiles. Anything green is nitrogen. Anything that is purple is nitrous oxide, laughing gas. And of course coming into this partly is water, so H2O liquid coming off of the ice pressure. That's Bonnie and Clyde, my uh, two pet birds. They like to get in on the conversation. They are green cheeked conyers. So they will uh, every so often get involved. The main line or the manifold here is one line that's collecting right down the middle. So this is where I would either bring in from the atmosphere or from my uh, furnace any gases. I've installed an analyzer here so I don't have to pull out my tool constantly and it will tell me what's in the pipe, in, in this case the manifold, and there's no gas currently in the manifold. One thing you're going to very quickly understand that you need is a storage tank for the volume of mixed gas. So that's what I have here, a portable gas tank in this case. Now, to get gas in and out of a storage tank, there's a couple of ways. You can use a volume pump. I'm using a pressure regulator here. I'm oh, sorry, a back pressure regulator here. Um, you, there's a number of ways that you can do this, but you want some way to pump the gas in to it. And by opening it, I open this up to the manifold and I can work with the gas so I can load in so much and shut it off or I can leave it open and I can eventually drain this tank if I so wish. Okay, so a storage tank is definitely useful. The other thing is, is if you are using gases from a furnace, they are very, very, very hot. So I make a cooling line. Coming up here in a loop with six radiators and a small inline tank, you can see I have the same sort of thing. I have a pressure regulator here and a valve. 
So I could take the hot gas from my furnace into my manifold or into my manifold and my storage tank and then I could pump some of that gas up into my cooling line and I have a small uh, 190 liter capacity uh, in, with all of this here and I can cool it down for gas that I want to save. Why is that important? Well, you don't want to breathe hot oxygen. If you try to breathe hot oxygen, it'll go straight through to your waste tank uh, and you'll be really burning off the power as well in your air conditioning in your suit. It's not good for you breathing hot gas. Uh, you don't want something to re it reach its flash point either. Okay? So, what you want to do on Mars quite often is get rid of the CO2 directly. And so, here we have a standard filter with uh, a filtration unit with filters in it. Okay, so it takes in here the mixed gas from the manifold and it divides it inside according to what the filters are. I've color coded this. So it will draw off CO2 and it will send the rest of the gases back <coughs> to the manifold. <coughs> From here, I may wish to store the CO2. I may wish to just throw it out in the atmosphere, get rid of it. On Mars, you don't need CO2 very, very often. In some of your hydroponics, setting up a room with carbon dioxide, you may need a little. So I have an offshoot here from my exit line where I would be pumping it out. Or I can turn that off and I can pump it into a, uh, a canister here. The pressure is important and the uh, pressure regulator allows you to set it. So you can press the C and go by ones, or you can go by one hundreds. And the pressure regular, I've set it to 9,000 for safety reasons. They can store up to about 10,000, but with pressure, uh, with temperature changes, I want some room for um, safety. So I could turn this on and I could pump it into a canister for use. Now, similarly, you may have canisters you wish to empty. So I could put a canister in here and pump all of it into my manifold. And of course, for the manifold, I can draw it into my storage tank, you know, out to the filters or up the cooling stack. So each of these are the same. They each have different examples of filtration. The oxygen coming off and going into that canister over there. Uh, the pollutants. Very rare you want to save pollutants. I like using it for um, cooling systems. The pollutant is the best one to use on your uh, passive cooling and your uh, gas cooling systems. Again, a vent with a shutoff valve in this case because I don't care what's in this part of the line uh, here and pollutants. Should probably have a pressure valve there because I'm going to get impurities here. Now on Mars, this is one you have to watch. The tank will develop liquid. And um, pollutants is one of the ones you have to watch. If the pressure gets too high because of the amount of liquids in this line, you can see at a little over five, it's starting to gather. So I really can't keep anything without addressing the liquid. 
And I could bleed that off in a number of ways using this uh, uh, input 2 uh, here. And I could draw off the, uh, the liquid if I so wished. Nitrogen. Here I have a setup of it coming in. Nitrogen is being filtered off. And I have a large insulated tank for my nitrogen. I'm finding I have a lot of nitrogen, and this is something I'm going to save to sell here. Uh, I do have a portable gas tank. I don't really need that anymore. I could take that all off, and I have canisters here. Uh, nitrogen, if I don't want to go out and get the, the cold ice to put in my atmosphere, I can have warmer... Uh, nitrogen here to take into my buildings, for instance. Okay, you could automate this whole thing to to go with your uh, internal building gas needs as well. So here I have an example of the filter filtering off the nitrogen. Okay, and it can go three ways. Again, I'm limiting this to be nine. And, of course, you can see there's uh, like 2,170 uh, moles in the largest storage tank, and it's not under any big pressure yet. It's got a capacity of 6,000 liters. Right, where this has got 140 liters, 141 moles in it only, much less gas. And it's uh, 6.43. Okay, so there's all three. Now, the nitrous oxide is usually your smallest volume of gas on Mars. And here I have a very simple, straightforward, and I have a whole 11 moles of it. Don't have much there. Volatiles, same as everything else. Now, the other thing I will create here is fuel. So fuel is made with volatiles and oxygen, two parts to one part. So here you can see I have the uh, volatiles. Oh, we need some painting done. Go oh, and I don't have any orange out here. And here we have my oxygen, and I I'm about to set up a larger oxygen storage because I'm finding I'm getting more oxygen than I can store in a canister. So I have the oxygen coming in to one of the inputs. I have the volatiles coming into the other input, and here I have a gas mixer. Now you can define this the same way as the regulator. It goes by 10 or by 1s if you press the C down. And what you need is a 66 volatile 34% oxygen, Okay, and that will come into your line here. So essentially this is fuel. And fuel is a good thing to sell, but also fuel is what is in your um, uh, canister here. For use in your welding torch. So as you use your welding torch, you need to fill it back up and you'll need to mix volatiles and oxygen. You have to be close. You don't have to be exactly 64 uh, 66.33. I, th I think the acceptable is uh, a percentage or two off. Now this will vary 
if your gases are different temperatures. This is a volume pump. It deals with volume. So if the temperature is different when you mix them, the temperature will average out. But if your oxygen is warmer, less of it will be going in because it has, expand, it has expanded. It's taking up less space. And when it, pumps a, when it pumps one liter in and two liters of the volatiles in, it will not be a 66-34 mix. Okay, that's important to remember that you may have to adjust that if you are in a hurry and you don't have the temperature balanced out between the volatiles and the oxygen. Some things I find handy is to have some empty canisters around. Here I have some pollutants that I'm working with and I have an oxygen tank that's uh, full over 9,000, some paints, and I always have some duct tape around pretty much everywhere just in case. Uh, when you have explosions, if you do something wrong, your suit can get partially damaged and duct tape can save you. Okay, the last thing I want to discuss here today is the ice crusher. The ice crusher can produce water and it can produce gases. So here I have a small inline tank and since it's different gases I could produce, it's a brown line in my case, and some gas is stored inside the unit. So if you put ice in here, depending on what you put in, you will get different. So let's just do an example. We'll throw in some volatiles and we'll turn it on. That was 16. And as you can see, it's straight volatiles. Not much there. It will, on a timed basis, transfer itself into the pipe. This is sometimes feeling a little slow. There, it's emptied. If I turn that off and I empty this line, some of the gas will be left in there. So if you're work, trying to work with one gas at a time, you have to leave it on when you're pumping it out. Okay, straight volatiles. Here we have nothing in the manifold, main line. We'll turn it on. This is set to pump volume of 10 liters through. As you can see, it's now entering the manifold line and it's exiting this here. So as the example, we'll turn that off and you can see, well, let's get this out of the way, 977 kilopascals, it's not changing. You can see the pressure in the pipe is under 977. So it's emptying the pipe, it's not emptying the machine. So I have to turn the machine back on, now it's emptying the machine. So that's important to remember when you're working with it. So that's going to empty out. Power low. Power low. I'm going to die. Nah, not today. We can solve low power real easy. So we'll just empty this out. And then we're pumping it through and putting it all into the manifold where my pressure is actually up to 2.4 megapascals now. A little bit more to empty it. Now from the manifold, I could take it into my storage tank. And let's pump it up into the cooling stack. 
let's say I really want to cool this down for some reason. So we'll move it up into the cooling stack. Here you can see the volume's going up. Cooling stack. And it's getting quite low pressure here. We're coming down under two kilopascals. The manifold will be emptying out as well into the cooling stack. Let's just get this empty. If you have an accident, if you leave a filter on and you turn the exit off, the pressure will build up here. Not everything can go right beside the filter. Sometimes you have to put a piece of pipe here. This pipe could blow. It's an easy mistake to make. Okay. So let's say we pump this up here and we have the temperature uh, increasing or decreasing, whatever we want to do in our stack. We can shut the stack off and we can open it back up and that will now just make it an extension of our manifold, our main line. So here we go. I don't want it to blow up that piece right there. So we're going to turn on our pump and we're going to pump it out. And the end result the volatiles are now, the amount of uh, moles is increasing here. So this is now empty. I shut that off. It's all in the manifold line now. And I could have multiple gases in here and working with them all independently, pulling them all off at the same time. Next to nothing in the line. It's empty. We can shut that off. Double check our line. It's empty. And you can see that little piece of pipe. I don't care whether it empties out or not. Shut that off. And actually, that volatile is full. It's 13.2 degrees. The oxygen is 15.5 degrees, so there would be a slight difference if we made that through to put fuel. Okay, so we may or may not need it. It's not an exact science on the fuel. You could be a percentage point off and it still works. So there we go. This Twitch video will be put onto YouTube, my channel, Grandpa Canuck. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, type out any questions you have about the basics of filtration. Uh, the add to this system that I have here, what I would do next is I would add an advanced furnace. So it would have this shutoff valve automatically in the advanced furnace, etc. And I would make a second manifold here at the back to gas storage containers that I can have collected to sell. So I would collect all my gases for sale or buy here, and I would co connect that into my manifold here. And I would use volume pumps to pump these this, this manifold main line and this one either in or out, depending on what I was doing. And that's an overview of filtration, Ask Atmospherics Basics.
Color code. Manifold connecting everything together. Storage tank. A cooling system here that I have a stack, a cooling stack. Multiple ways of getting rid of the gas into the atmosphere into three different types of tanks here. Mixing gases. Okay? The tools you need to have. How to handle cold uh, ices into your system. That's the overview. This has been Grandpa Canuck. All you people and bots out there, have a good day. Hope you've learned something. And any follow-up questions you have, please send them over. Have a good one. Bye-bye, everybody.